let's talk about momentum transport operations. So yeah, we have this before actually going to the what and why content. Let me show you this chemical plant and try to pause the video and identify anything that is related to momentum transport. Momentum, as the name implies, is about multiplying the mass and the velocity. This gives us something related to energy, similar as the kinetic energy here. Anyways, we have first things first, all these ducts or pipings. This is one. We have about maybe this flow measure measurement. You will need to understand that as well. How does it work? How can we measure liquids, velocity, and of course volumetric flow rates? What else do we have here? Maybe a pump, which I cannot find. Well, there should be a pump anywhere in order to be able to move all this. And if we're talking about the gas, probably we are talking about as a compressor. And if this is very, very hot, you will also have some fans in order to cool down the facility. So now what? What is what we're going to study in the momentum transfer operations? I love to split it into two concepts, or maybe three. Let's say the basics, which is all about fluid mechanics theory. So how maybe you want to see the co-wet flow. You can either see this in a class which has the exactly the same name, exactly same name, or you can see maybe you saw a little bit on your transport phenomena subject. So whatever case you know, you already know what's viscosity, what's a profile, why do pipes have loss friction, and so on. So once you understand the basics, maybe even Reynolds number you will be able to study the two types of flow we have. Either you have a incompressible flow, which means that if you add pressure, you will not be able to change the, or to be able to compress that. So this is typically for liquids and maybe operations that use gases, but that not have different changes of pressure. So maybe a fan, if you have a fan, you will understand that maybe when you blow this right here, you will not move that, let's say, strong, the air, so the air you can model it as is liquid. But then eventually we come to here to compressible flow, which is what happens when we move it so fast or so hard that we actually compress the air. And you know that compression means change in pressure, change in volume, and change in temperature. So a lot of things happen right here when we change pressure, uh, volume, and temperature. So this is a little bit harder to model. Now guys, about the incompressible flow, typically you're going to start to talk about the Bernoulli equation. In many systems, but the, mo the most common one in chemical engineering is piping systems. So how do we move this liquid to here, to here? We need a pump and we need a pipe and we need accessories and typically you will see that we have friction loss so we need a pump with a certain efficiency and so on so we start analyzing that we start studying why friction and uh, is given in a pipe or accessories which type of materials are better for certain chemicals or for certain operations maybe outdoor or indoor you start understanding the theory behind that and you start to calculate friction losses. Friction losses are very important because they mean energy loss. We need to pump harder, we need to pump high pressures and that means electricity, well that means mechanical work which turns into electricity which goes to money. Pumping, 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 we study a lot of pumps, how to improve the efficiency of pumping systems, how to choose a pump, and the head of the system versus the head of the pump and how to choose let's say good pumps and eventually we do a lot of exercises which i love to call mechanical energy equation applications which is pretty similar to bernoulli's equation but it includes friction it includes the pump it includes a work going out such as turbine 
let's say you have a meal, well, yes, you cannot only go and take or give energy in, let's say the pump, we can also take out energy out, which is the turbine example, or maybe a meal. Now that's for liquids, now we go for vapors or gases. We want to know how, actually this is very funny, how we move gases and as they move you will see that they have more friction, the harder the friction, the higher the temperature they will achieve and change of temperature means expansion. So it's a very funny uh, way to understand this. We will have typically three flows, isentropic, which is not that common, adiabatic, as the name implies, means there is no change with the environment and as you can imagine the only cases are when we have insulation material that is not going in or out of heat in the pipe. And isothermal, well, as the name implies, same temperature. And where do you have same temperature? Well, the weather, let's say we have 25 Celsius degrees or 77 Fahrenheit. Well, that's actually the isothermal. You can see that the air will be always at this temperature. So we have this system right here. So we have the most two used ones. Then once we understand how do they move, we want to understand how to compress and eventually you're going to get this topic which is compression stages. Many times it's better to compress little by little because if you, if you compress it, you will increase the temperature which means that in the next compression you're going to need more energy. But if you go here and cool it down, you can compress it, same ratio of pressure, less work involved. And this is the compression stage. And we see a little bit on packed and fluidized beds. These are operations that not necessarily have a reaction, so therefore you haven't studied these in your reactor courses. You can simply add packed material or fluidized beds for momentum applications. And also you will see agitation and mixing, very important topic especially for the coating industry that they want to do some mixtures or food industry and so on. Now, why would you want to study that? Well, we will have a lot of increase and decrease of pressures, more typically decrease or fall or drop in pressure, and you need to recover that pressures. Now, you also have a lot of storage of fluids. You're interested in how to storage fluid. Well, you use need a tank and you need to maybe start moving it because if you don't move it the liquid will settle down or I don't know it has plenty of applications and you're also interested in moving fluids you, just, you need to move it from the storage tank to maybe a distillation column or extraction apparatus or a distillation column right here whatever you have the operation you need it here you need operation design well, you need to know how much pressure drop you're going to have in order to calculate how long it's going to be the pipe, how much horsepower you need to have this pump right here, and so on. It also helps us for the energy balance, sorry, balance for the unit operation. It's not the same if I tell you I need to move 5 liters per hour that I need to move 100 cubic meters per second. This will be a dam and this will be maybe a lab operation. And eventually we want this in order to optimize the process. So as the example I told you before, the compression stages is done in order to decrease the electricity bill. We want to spend less, so that's what we do. Now I say think I have one fluid dynamic course online. I'm pretty sure it's only the incompressible flow. As you can see it is part one of two. Part two will be the compressible flow, which is gases. So, so you can have it more visual. The course I have is this one right here, part one. Part two is going to be in the next semester, probably online. Depends on how hard I work and how many courses you are wondering. I should do a poll, so if you are interested, I will bring it up to you. So just click here, go to, I have Plenty of videos on YouTube, check out the playlist or you can go directly to the website here. You can always try it, a 3D, a 3D free trial, if you like it, you can 
get plenty of practice videos, of course all the course theory, I think it's up to 140 solved problems and you can get some Q&A, your priority member and plenty of stuff. Uh, if you want to click right here, you can click the pause button. So if you're interested, you can always try the free trial or if you have some friends, I can give you some coupons and I give it to you. Just send me an email or send it through the form at chemicalengineeringguide.com.